This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The just shall live by the faith of the Son of God. I no longer have to live by my faith. I can live by the faith of the Son of God. So that means when Jesus says, see, see, what is the faith of the Son of God? I, I need to break that down. The faith of the Son of God is all all that has been made available, all of the finished works of Jesus Christ that has been made available to us by his faith. In other words, he did it. My faith is not responsible for the righteousness of God being available. My faith is not responsible for healing being available. My faith is not responsible for any of the finished works being available. Those things are not available because of my faith. Those things are all available because of the faith of the Son of God. Text to Give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to Give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. So let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed Today is a day that I've been looking forward to for a year, over a year. The Lord began to deal with me <clears throat> on some issues where the grace of God is concerned and just really has solidified some things in, in my understanding. And uh, most of all of this year, it's going to require us to really be taught and trained in the Word we don't have time to have fun and games at church. We got to get ready. There's serious times ahead of us, and there are certain things we need to know and we need to have an understanding of. And so today I'm going to begin a series entitled Understanding the Trials of Your Faith. Understanding the Trials of Your Faith. And many of us understand that there are a lot of things that happen in life, <laughs> and even more so today in the midst of pandemic and the normal stuff that happens. And yet sometimes there's a question, why is this happening? Um, sometimes there's a question, is it, is it God's will for me to suffer? Is it God's will for me to go through these trials? Is it God's will for me to go through the things that we go through? I think sometimes we're misled into thinking that as Christian people, that means we have no more trouble, no more trials. That's it because I'm saved. I can't tell you how wrong that is. Because as Christian people, we must mature. And we've got to understand God's Word because Satan is trying to play a trick. He's, He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's the accuser of the brethren, and the battle is going to be fought right up here. And, and the Bible says my people are destroyed because of their ignorance, because of what they don't know and what they don't understand. When I first teaching, started teaching the gospel of grace, I lost a lot of friends. I became this heretic and all these other kind of things, but everything I had gone through was to prepare me just for all of that. And boy, if they had a problem with me then, Oh, dear God, they might as well take my name and put mud on it now because I am completely and totally free of the fear of people. And I'm ready to teach this, and I'm ready to share this with you. And so I'm going to talk about the trials of our faith, but the first thing I want to deal with is, is, is our faith. And this is going to go against and contradict 
a lot of things, and I'm not up here trying to say that, you know, this person was wrong or that person was wrong. I believe everybody taught what God told them to teach for that time and for that season. But there's a new season right now. There's a season that's going on that, that churches have never dealt with before. Don't know what to say, don't know how to, how to do it. So you're going to have to come out of your religion. Religion and self are closely related. And there are a lot of things you have heard religiously that I'm asking you to rethink these things as we go through the Word. Don't fight it, because I've already gone through it. Don't fight it. Just listen to it, check it out. And if you're born again with the Holy Spirit, He will bear witness in your spirit. Now, if you're just selfish and religious, then you'll try to protect your religion, and then that'll create another problem. And so today is the first day of what I will call a can of whoop open on the devil, amen? <laughs> We're going to eat his lunch, amen? Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, let's, let's start off with this, the faith issue. Let's, because we're talking about the trials of our faith, and for most of us, we have been trained, not that anything's wrong with it, but maybe there is some things I want to look at. We have trained, we've been trained to have faith in our faith. Does everybody understand that when, when I say? In other words, you have faith in all of the faith principles that you operate, and you're, you're looking and depending on, on you. You're looking and depending on your performance in faith to bring you victory. But how many of you have ever ventured out in faith and ended up a little disappointed because you didn't see the manifestation of your faith. Can I get a witness? I have many times. You know, where, whether it was sickness and I was having faith and that didn't happen, or whether it was finances and, and I was believing for that, did all thing, that didn't happen. I, I remember one time, I, and my, you know, I, I, my aunt, she's gone home to be with the Lord, but you know, I, I remember releasing my faith. I remember using oil. I remember going on a fast. I remember putting on, on, on the Jewish, uh, uh, what's that cloth? Yeah, and, and I did everything I knew to do. And she, she died. And, and I'm like, you know, what, what my faith was, my faith was, have you ever been that? My faith was this. What happened? And then there, there are lots of Christians who have, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, Christians anymore because of that, the failure of their faith, okay? And so, I, I'm thinking, Lord, maybe I'm missing something here. This, I have faith in my faith, and, and I'm thinking, well, you know, it, there's something not, not there, faith in my faith. And I heard that, I was trained in that, and then sometimes I would, you know, do the principles and have faith in my faith, and then I, and I see some results. And then sometimes I didn't. And then, I guess when God was trying to get my attention, there was a stream of uh, 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 times that I did it, and just nothing happened. I, I never did think about leaving him, but I'm thinking something's not right. Something's, I'm missing something here, and I need to know this, okay? And then the first time I, I taught it publicly in front of 12,000 people, I was rebuked publicly for it. And I thought, well, I didn't say nothing wrong. I mean, they just didn't understand it because I, I just knew that was the right thing. And I put it on the bench there for a moment and put it on the sideline for a moment and just simmered in it and worked out some more details on the inside, and here we are today. Are you ready? <laughs> so now here's where we start. I go to Hebrews chapter 11, 4, and I look at all these people that did things by faith. Verse 4, he says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he uh, being dead speaketh. So that was his faith. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see, see death. That was his faith. Verse 6, uh, but without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 7, by faith, Noah did what he did, being warmed of God, uh, things not seen as yet move uh, with fear. You can read all that. Next one. 
He says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to, to go out into the place, which, let's go to the next one. He says, by faith, he sojourned there, Abraham, to, into a land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs and, come, come on, and, 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 and through faith also Sarah herself re received strength to conceive seed, her faith. Go to the next one. And by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Go to the next one. But now, now notice, all of, the, all, of the, all of the people you see in Hebrews chapter 11 were Old Testament saints. Every last one of them were Old Testament saints. And one thing about Old Testament saints, they live by their faith. Amen. And by their faith, they did some great things. So you don't see me coming down on it. By their faith, they did some awesome things. But look at what he said at the end of showing us all the Old, old, old Testament, all, all the Old Covenant prophets. Look what he said at the end. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. They, saw, they got a lot of good things to happen, but they didn't receive the promise. God having provided some better things for us, New Testament saints, that they without us should not be complete. So even though they got a good report with their faith and having faith in their faith, he said God's got something better, better, for us. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the faith of New Testament people should be different than the faith of Old Testament people. Amen. Somebody said, what are you talking about? Okay. You remember me years ago going through these four scriptures when I taught on faith? Habakkuk 2, 4, Romans 1, 17, Galatians chapter 3 and 11. Hebrews 10, 38. All right, now let's do it again with that in mind I just shared with you. So go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and 4. Habakkuk 2 and 4. There's a three-letter word I never could uh, work out. And so I just kind of did something with it, but I never could work it out. Look at this. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. Now, this is talking about Old Testament people. But the just shall live by his faith. <laughs> you, remember, you, remember, you remember, Bishop, we, we would go around talking about the just is going to live by his faith or we said it was God's faith. No, 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 no. It's making it very clear in the Old Testament. You just saw the heroes in the Old Testament. They were living by their faith and they got great report. There's some things that happened when they were living by their faith. But God said that we were going to have something better than our faith. Y'all follow me? He said that they're not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Every person in the Old Testament that believed in God lived by their faith. His faith. His faith. Now, I don't see it anymore in the New Testament. Romans 1, 17, let's look at it real quick. Romans 1, 17. Now, please understand me, I am not by any means saying that when a person lived by their faith that things didn't happen. But even in the Old Testament, you see these guys living by their faith and they still went through hell, some of them. Yeah, they got a, they got a good faith report after they came out the fiery furnace. After they left the lion's den, right, right, right. after the flood. Right, right. Now watch this. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Go to Galatians chapter, was it, 3 and 11? but that no man is justified or declared righteous by the law in the, spirit of, uh, in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. 
But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, if I had enough time, I would dissect those three scriptures and they would all be grace-based situations. Righteousness is a grace-based situation by faith. This situation here about not drawing back, that's a grace-based situation. Now, let me, let me take you where I'm talking about. Galatians 2 and 20, go there. All right, so what's the better? Instead of, look, what's better than living by your faith? Because if you're living by your faith, you're, you're, you're depending on you. You got to depend on you. If you're living by your faith, your faith and the faith of those heroes of faith, they depended on them. And there's nothing wrong with that unless something better comes. I'm not dogging out the old. I'm just saying, why stay in the old when something better has come? Why use the, the, the telephone at home with the long cord? You remember that? Trying to walk around when you got a cell phone. The better has come. Now, if you want to stay, and the Bible tells you, you want to stay stuck back there, you can. But if the better ha has come, come down. You're not supposed to be screaming, come down. When the better has come, just go towards the better. And look what he says. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I now live this life, the now that I now live, the life I now live in the flesh, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The just shall live by the faith of the Son of God. I no longer have to live by my faith. I can live by the faith of the Son of God. So that means when Jesus says, see, see, what is the faith of the Son of God? I, I need to break that down. The faith of the Son of God is all, all that has been made available, all of the finished works of Jesus Christ that has been made available to us by his faith. In other words, he did it. My faith is not responsible for the righteousness of God being available. My faith is not responsible for healing being available. My faith is not responsible for any of the finished works being available. Those things are not available because of my faith. Those things are all available because of the faith of the Son of God. And so for me to have faith that I'm the righteousness of God when I'm not doing right, I'm not, I'm not righteous because of my faith. I'm righteous because of the faith of the Son of God. So now I put my faith in the faith of the Son of God. My faith is in, in what Jesus has done. In other words, even when I say I don't believe I'm righteous, you have to now contend with this. Jesus believes you're righteous. So even if you don't believe you're righteous, believe what Jesus believes. So what do you have to do to have faith? All you got to do to have faith is to be born again and invite Jesus in, and now Jesus lives in you, praise God, so you have faith right now. You have faith right now. That's why I won't tell you, don't come down here if you don't have faith. What I'll tell you is, don't come down here if you don't have faith in what Jesus has already done. Jesus has already healed you, so don't come down here begging and, and believing God that your faith can get you healed, because I found out that my faith is lacking in a whole lot of ways, but his faith has already manifested the stuff. So rather than me trying to make something happen with my faith, Jesus has already made it happen with his faith, so I'm going to have faith in his faith, and I live now in this flesh by the faith of the Son of God. So when we talk about faith for New Testament Christians, here's what I'm talking about. You're sick. Well, I have faith I'm going to be healed. I hear what you're saying. But with precision, you're sick. Well, I have faith in the faith of the Son of God who has made healing available for me. Therefore, my faith is in what's already finished. My faith is not in me doing these set of things to make this happen. 
I believe because Jesus believed it and what he believed has already happened. So my faith is by the Son of God. We live by the faith of the Son of God. I am living by the faith of the Son of God. What, what position now are you in when you now live by the faith of the Son of God? Watch this. Where do you find yourself when you now live by the faith of what Jesus has done? You find yourself in, watch this, rest. You rest. You rest. Why do you rest? Because you know that this thing being manifested is not necessarily on you. It is on Jesus. And so if Jesus believed you're righteous, I believe I'm righteous. And so I, I, I enter into rest. I, I, I can rest now because Jesus has made me righteous. And I believe what Jesus believes. Glory to God. And instead of me putting all the pressure on me, well, my faith has got to get this to happen. I say to myself, Jesus' faith has already made it happen. And so now I have have faith that I can receive what he has already manifested by his faith. Somebody says, you've been a little picky. Not necessarily. Do you know the things that have happened in our lives when we put all of it on our shoulders? You put it all on your shoulders. I'm the righteousness of God. And now what happens? Now through your works, you're trying to get something that's already been gotten. Oh, God, I need to be healed. And so on your faith, you're doing everything you can so you can get healed instead of having faith that Jesus has already made healing available. It even messes up your prayer life. You pray for two hours, I'm done in 10 minutes. Because you're doing all, of you, you're saying all the scriptures, you're making all the confessions, you're doing everything the Bible meant for Old Testament Christians to do without having faith in Jesus Christ to try to make it happen. And I go before God and say, Father, I believe you believe that I'm healed. <laughs> Therefore, I believe you. And because you believe I'm healed, and I believe what you believe, then I now rest that I'm healed. All of a sudden, you can't do nothing in this life without depending on Jesus. And that's what he wanted. The difference is faith that depends on you and your effort and faith that depends on him. And we now have the better. We now live, we live, we live by the faith, we live by the faith of Jesus Christ. All right, go, go back to that. that uh, let's read it in the message, this, this thing in the message, verse 19 through 21 in the message. What actually took place is this. And this is what it reads in the message. <laughs> I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God. Can I get a witness? <laughs> and it didn't work. So I quit being a law man so that I could be, a, be God's man. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not going to go back on that. If trouble isn't God's will for believers, why does it seem like we always experience it? In his series, Why Is This Happening? The Reason for Trials and Suffering, Creflo Dollar explores the persecution of the godly and the refining that comes from it. God's bottom line objective is to get you to a place where you declare your dependence on God. That's going to require for the goal to be put in the fire. Jesus declared totally dependent upon God. Your faith has got to be put on trial so that God can perfect it 
for what he's trying to use you to do. And then he needs to get you like he got Jesus. He's like, listen, Jesus says, I do nothing except the Father. All five life-changing messages can be yours today for a love gift of just 30 U.S. dollars or more. Call the number on your screen or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore to get yours today and be free. It's time to take a grace-filled journey with Creflo and Taffy Dollar, July 14th through 16th at the 2022 Grace Life Conference. God's not sitting there saying, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. you. You're going to hell now. I'm getting you, I'm getting you. You'll be in hell by 12 o'clock. Grace would not be grace if you had to earn it. Grace is only grace if it's a gift that you received in spite of yourself. The revelation of grace changed my life because it taught me to rest. Um, it taught me just to have faith in what it is that Christ has already provided to me. The future is bright and we've got to go towards the things that God has for our life. And so that's the type of breakthrough that takes what grace has made available. Meet us live at the World Dome or online July 14th through 16th for the 2022 Grace Life Conference. Reserve your seat, register now, Text Grace Life to 51555 or call the number on your screen. Visit gracelife-conference.org today. Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving. It was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to sow at this time. We want to thank you in advance for your support. To support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Where do you find yourself when you now live by the faith of what Jesus has done? You find yourself in, watch this, rest. When Jesus came, the striving was to end. He says, enter into my ease. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.